Hey there and welcome back to our channel. In today's tutorial, we will learn about the 10 most used Airtable formulas this year. Formulas are a powerful feature in Airtable that allows referencing, conditional statements, and creative data operations. They can enhance project management, automate recurring events, calculate costs, and even provide specific data based on time. So how can we use Airtable formulas? Formulas are essentially a field type inside of Airtable, selected from the available list in a table. If you go to here inside of Airtable and start from scratch, you quite literally just add a field, search formula, press enter, and then from here, this is the field, and then you essentially just add the writing inside of here in order to make the Airtable formula. Formula writing is done directly in this formula field with results formatted as numbers, dates, or strings. Formatting options include decimals, integers, currency, percent, duration, date format, and time zone settings. So let's talk about those most used Airtable formulas. Number one is going to be left and right. This extracts characters from the beginning or end of a string. So let's type this out here. It's useful for extracting portions of data like social security numbers. So let's just put the, in the, let's do this notes field. Let's do left and do notes. And I'm gonna do three, all right? So let's just do this right here. What I'm essentially gonna do is, let me just change this to a specific option, like a uh, add ID or something, just as an example. And let's say it was, Five five four or three four three, two three four five. All right. Now you'll notice here that the beginning three on that left side are going to show. So we have five five four. Now if I change this field right here to be the right for this, all I have to do it once again is type right, and then let's do that add ID, and then do comma three, press save right here, then the or actually let's do four, I think that would make more sense. Let's do save, make sure your formula is correct. Now from here we have three, two, five. All right, one last fix here. Let's make sure it's the last, okay, four. All right, now considering that, I think what we can do is notice that there was an extra enter there. So by clicking off, you now have the beginning and the end of this ad ID. And then furthermore, the next most popular one is pretty simple. You're getting the length of this. So if you're curious how many characters in length that add ID is, um, you can do that, although that wouldn't really make any sense. So let's, for example, create a new text field for a long text that could be a headline. So inside of things like Google ads and various ad platforms, the length of a item should only be, you know, 15 characters, for example. So let's do headline length. And then I'm gonna do length, which is L-E-N, and then grab that headline, and then close off the parentheses. So I'm gonna do super cool <laughs> ad. <laughs> and you'll notice that this super cool ad length is only 14 characters, so we're good to go. <laughs> so let's add a couple more length strings of text. And if it's greater than 15, what I can do inside of here is make it so that if length is greater than 15, put shorten, and if not, put good. And from there, we have save. So you can see this is needs to be shortened, and this is good to go. Now, inside of text, we have a few more formulas. So if we do another one, there's actually the find and search options. So these locate the characters inside of a string. So inside of here, let's do find, and let's look for super. <laughs> So find, and then it's string defined, so like what text, so I'm gonna do super, and I'm gonna do where to search, which is gonna be the headline, and then the start from position, and I'm gonna start that from one. And make sure what you do here is for text strings, you're gonna actually put quotes around there, so let's do super and have a capital item there. So you can see that super is gonna be right at that one spot. So you found one instance of super. So if I write super twice, it's gonna be super, super. And essentially it's, it's a binary situation, so it's not gonna count them. So if I were to remove super here, it's now gonna say zero since there isn't any. And the same thing can be done for search. So let me just duplicate this field really quick. Let's do a search formula. And the only difference here, if we do search, is going to be you're gonna find a string and then it will 
return the index of the first occurrence of the string. Let's do cool. And then let's do headline. And you can see that there's one instance of cool within here. Now, if I put super cool add within here, you see that it is the second. You see that it is the seventh character across in this instance. Hence, the difference between find and search is like where it is and then like whether it occurs or not is find. Now, next on this list is actually going to be a round, which is going to essentially be able to round numbers to the nearest integer. So say we wanted to, for example, figure out um, an item here. Let's put a number property and let's put add spend, right? And say for some reason in this ad spend, there was uh, 87.5 spent. Interesting number right there, but 87 and a half dollars. What if we wanted to round that? We totally could. So in order to round that, all that we would do, we go to the formula and let's do formula and do round. And then we're going to type round. And then we are going to put the ad spend. And after that, you have the ability to pick what is the precision? So let's do one right here. And that's essentially how many decibel points we have. As you see right here, or how many integer amounts we have. So round is going to be to, to here. So let's do it to, I don't know, three. And that's going to be the integer amount right there. So this essentially sets it so that it rounds to the nearest integer. And we're glad that this exists because sometimes things get a little out of whack. Or there's 87.84, 87 point, you know, four. We want to make sure that it rounds to the proper amount. And as you can see, it rounds up or down, mattering on whether it's past 5.0 or not, like normal rounding would occur. Next, we're going to use substitute or replace. Uh, this actually replaces instances of text in a field. So in a headline, let's say I wanted to make it so that a, you know, certain a specific headline was used over and over again, but we're changing based on brand name, for example. Let's do this. Let's make a field and we're just going to call it um, brand. Let's do a single line text. It's called brand name. And I'm going to put something here called placeholder, right? And then I'm going to put Jeff. So like Jeff's. And then for a formula, let's put a formula for Substitute, let's do substitute. And then let's do placeholder with, and then let's take that specific part. So placeholder again, and you're gonna put what you're gonna replace it with. And I'm gonna replace it with the brand name, right? So the first one's the in, the entire string, then it's what you wanna replace out of that string, then it is what you wanna replace it with. Let's put this right here. You can see that placeholder is replaced with Jeff's. So placeholder is replaced with Jeff's. Now, another option is the replace feature. Let's do a formula again, and let's do replace. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna replace the number of characters between beginning with the start character with the replacement text. So you can see right here, if I do database, and then I put two and five, and then put O, oh, it's gonna replace database with dose. Very interesting formula for sure. Now the next one we can do here is the date difference. So say you have multiple uh, times, you know, different date properties. So let's do due date, right? And then we can make a formula for this. It's pretty easy. So let's do a date difference, date time difference. And it's gonna calculate the difference between the two dates. So let's do uh, due date and today in days. So we can put a quote and then the amount. So you can do days, weeks, months, whatever your goal is here. So let's do that. So it's not available until I set the due date. So let's say that. Okay, so it has been 13 days since then or vice versa. Honestly, in order for these to make a little bit more sense, maybe you want to put it uh, the other direction. You can totally swap these. It's essentially going to subtract in whichever direction you put the properties. So you can see it's been 13 days, or if you're looking more future forward, you can make that adjustment as well. Next, what we can do is set a specific time zone for a date field. So let's do that. We're gonna go to formula here. We're gonna set this to set time zone. And I'm gonna grab that due date property. So let's do set time zone. I'm gonna do due date. And we're gonna do, I'm gonna do America slash Los Angeles. Which is pretty cool. The fact that we can just like natural language process that, right? 
So you can see that it's gonna be 1.10 at 12 a.m. And then it's gonna show an error for anything that doesn't have a date yet. So let's make that adjustment. And if we wanna make it this edit field, include the time. Even if I said this to, for me, right? I wanna, I wanna set the time. Let's convert in that change. Let's set it to noon, right? Based on where my account is from, it's gonna subtract that time to make it a six hours later situation since that is the time difference between my time zone and LA. It'll show that six hours later for the LA time zone. It's very useful when you're trying to make a reference point as to when something is a certain time in a different time zone inside of Airtable versus what you're looking at. It's definitely useful for working across time zone with your teams. Another really useful one for automation often is just literally by doing a record ID. So if you just type record ID and then go to your formula, this essentially is going to give each new record you make a custom record ID based on its creation. So it's useful for API integrations, creating specific URLs and automations for sure. And then I really enjoy this one, concatenate. This is once again, very useful for things like advertising. So let's concatenate a formula and we're gonna do it real headline, right? So let's grab the headline doing concatenate. Then we're gonna put, first we're gonna put brand name, then we're gonna put a space, and then we're going to put the headline. And then we're gonna close it off. Let's go here. So the real headline, as you can see with a little bit of tweaking, becomes, once I get rid of this silly placeholder, Jeff's super cool ad. Heck yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. So essentially every time you change this brand idea, I can put Jared. So Jared's super cool ad would then pop up right here as the formula calculates. It's very useful for creating a primary field, summarizing key information in the table, by the way. Last but not least, the if formula. You know, we showed it a little bit earlier here, but I'll, I'll just highlight this once again with the properties within here. Let's do an if formula. So let's combine multiple of them, right? So headline length. So if the length of the real headline is greater than 15, shorten me, else good to post. And then close the parentheses off. So basically, this is what you're checking, right? So if this is the case, then the first instance is gonna be what would come out based on this being true, else this is what would come out if it's false. So I'm gonna rename this since I already have that made, so real headline length, then press create field. You can see right here, we put this, it shows shorten me because this is over 15. So I have to put Jared's and then let's just do, let's get rid of the super. Oh, good to post. And then if I wanna make this even more fun, I often like to put emojis here. So I'll put like a little X here. I'm like, no, short me. Or if it's good to post, I can put like a check mark, right? Like a green check mark. As you can see here, they're all good to post. So that's a breakdown of some of the most basic formulas that you can find and the most popular ones that you'll use if you get into using Airtable. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing for more insights into Airtable and software. Thanks for watching. Share this video with anyone you want to elevate their presentation game, and we'll see you in the next one.